Welcome to the Cedar Valley Rotary Club meeting, the best Rotary Club in the, there you go, Charlie. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the four way test is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And I hear Jared has a song for us today. No, I thought Jared had it, Louis. Okay. Uh, Jared, he's the bad boy today. Okay, I think everybody knows that the Mariners need some help. So let's sing, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Thanks, Louie. Do we have any visiting guests today? How about visiting Rotarians today, besides our program? Okay, let's get through it. So we do have uh, some club business today. Um, Chris, we have an induction today with uh, for Chris Schaffner. So I'm going to bring Chris Johnson up so we can do that induction. The camera can see you better. David. All right, President Phil, fellow Rotarians and guests. It is indeed an honor for us to induct Chris Schaffner as the newest member of the Cedral Woolley Rotary Club. The mission of Rotary is to provide service to others, promote high ethical standards, and advance world understanding, goodwill and peace through its fellowship with business, professionals, and community leaders. We are not a political organization, but are dedicated to the practice of good citizenship. We are not a charitable organization, but are dedicated to the helping of our fellow man. We are not a religious organization, but are dedicated to the ideals of morality and high ethical standards. We bring together our individual skills, resources and qualities of leadership to improve the quality of life for the people, not only in our communities, but also in the communities around the world. Chris, you have been chosen for membership into the Rotary Club of Cedar Rowley because the Rotarians of this club feel that you possess the qualities of leadership in your field, the qualities of personal conduct, the willingness to share those qualities of personal conduct, all directed towards the pursuance of Rotary's mission. It has been said that when a Cedar Rowley Rotarian is asked to perform, the answer is? Yes. President Phil, fellow Rotarians and guests, please join me in welcoming Chris Schaffner as the newest member of the Rotary Club of Cedar Woolley. And David, you have a packet that you might like to? So I'm just really delighted to have Chris join our club. Uh, for those of you who don't know, his uh, Schaffner Pharmacy just opened 
here in town and it's a, a great pharmacy and a coffee shop and it's really going to be a hub of our community. Chris has been coming to Country Middle Village and his team over the past oh, eight years or so giving presentations, volunteering his time to, to help the residents out there. So Chris, I just couldn't be happier. So this right here is your um, packet thing. There's your pin, the bill and it's in here. You'll pay Sheena. She'll come after your money. And um, um, that's it. Welcome. Welcome to the club. Thank you so much. You have some three words. Say a couple words. Say something. Say hey. Say hello. Um, gosh. Uh, well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I think I know most of you, and if I don't know you, I'm looking forward to uh, to getting to know you. So thank you very much for having me. All right. Excellent. Well, welcome, Chris. And, and I have to put a plug in um, for Chris as well. When I was superintendent during COVID and trying to get kids and teachers and staff back to school, Chris stepped up, Shafter helped us vaccinate uh, lots of uh, staff out there. And he was uh, one of our biggest fans of uh, promoting schools um, to be back in session. So thanks, Chris, for that. Uh, in regard to the budget, no change on the budget. Steve is back. Uh, we, we are starting to spend some money, as you know. Uh, auction meeting, I just saw Tim come in. Tim Hallard, you wanna talk a little bit about the auction meeting? Okay, next Thursday, not not tonight, next Thursday, 5.30, City Library. So that'll go, and I do have a question. I just want to get a quick, want to get a quick response from you all. The Heritage Flight Museum has increased their rental fee from $2,500 to $7,500. Big jump. So anyway, that's something we need to think about. Uh, I don't know yet. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely hit him up on that. Uh, Eric's talking about the sound system wasn't that great. And if they're going to raise the rate that much, well, okay, let's raise the service a little bit too, which would be good for them as well. Now, the other question, now I've lost my track. Um, Well, the meeting, that, uh, that's all I can think of right now. Okay, if you think of it later, you can, you can break in. Okay, um, so next Thursday, 5.30, library. Uh, Burlington Rotary, uh, we have four tickets. They're taken. Um, Becky and and um, is stepping up to, to go there, but it is October 1st. It is at Swedish, if you uh, would like to go. Uh, the Anacortes Centennial Celebration, remember we have 10 seats there. That is February 23rd, so think about that. All right, I do think we have a raffle. I think Samantha and Daryl. Yep, here we go. The first winner is number one. Nice job. And number 31. Jeff McCann. All right. Thank you. Number 57. Mr. Nielsen. Mr. Nielsen. No, he's on a lucky street. He had a couple lucky golf shots last week. Now he <laughs> wins the raffle. I think that beer's yeah, bouncing off the yeah. I think this is the last one. Okay, and number sixty-four. Sixty-four. All right.
Okay, thanks for the raffle. And now it's Jared's turn. You are up, Sergeant of Arms. And he's dressed for it. Test it. Tactical pajamas. That's what they are. All right. My sidekick, Eric, our wonderful team captain, is going to help me collect money. Doug, I hope you brought a lot. Raise your hand if you were at Rotary last week. If your hand's not up, take your hand and reach in your wallet, pull out $2. I will pay 20 because I miss and I believe in finding myself. Thank you, my team, for stepping up and covering for me. It's football season. Go Cubs. Raise your hand if you've been to a Cedar Lake High School football game. Or if you've listened to one on the radio this season. Been to one or listened to it on the radio. If you haven't, pay a dollar. So I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of rotary trivia. And I learned a little bit in forming these questions. This will be some Paul Harris trivia. I know that we have some Paul Harris award winners here, so maybe you can help your teams out. For this table, when was Paul Harris born? Very close. 1868. Okay. Pay $2, please. All right. Over to this table. Let's see if uh, Chief Wagner can pull an answer out here for his group. Where was Paul Harris born? Is that your final answer? Racine, Wisconsin. Pay $2, please. All right. This is a this is an easy question. You guys got this. Name one, just one of the three universities that Paul Harris attended. Just one. University of Chicago? That's incorrect. Incorrect. Can this table I'm going to see if this table can get it. Can this table name one of the three universities that Paul Harris attended? Incorrect. Pay $2. They are University of Vermont, Princeton, and University of Iowa. Pay $2, please. We've got the brain trust here. This is a softball question. You guys got this. What was Paul Harris' occupation? That's correct. All right. And bonus, if, some, if any Rotarian can answer this question correctly, which I think somebody will, I will pay $5. What was the Chicago Rotary Club's first public service project in 1907 under President Paul Harris? That's correct. I'll pay $5. <laughs> Jared, you're, you're still up. Happy dollars. Happy bucks. Happy bucks. Who's got them? Happy bucks. David? Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. I have a happy 10 bucks. So happy that Chris Schaffner is now a Rotarian. I'm also happy that Blake Gurney is in Washington. He flew in from Virginia this morning. Uh, he's got a wedding this weekend, and then he's going to stick around, and we're heading to Pullman next week for homecoming on October 1st. We're very happy for that. Thank you. For Mrs. Davids. Happy Bucks. Anybody else? Anybody else? Louie. There you go. I got a happy six dollars. Since uh, I don't think Josh is here, the father of Mason, my grandson, 
But uh, Monday we went up to Ferndale. He plays on the JV football team. And uh, a little bit of history of him. As a freshman, he was declared the second fastest freshman in the state of Washington in the 200 meters. The only other kid that beat him was from Lake Washington High School. So on the ensuing kickoff, Mason ran it back for six, 85 yards. So he's, he's doing well. You had my steps in today. I've got a happy 10, but it's also a be on the lookout because my son gets his driver's license tomorrow. <laughs> Eric? So I got a happy 10. Uh, last week, as many of you who, who were here are aware, I talked a lot of trash to Brock, and Tim and I faced off with Brock and Carl, and we totally smashed them in the golf tournament, and we're, rain we're now the reigning champions. So the trophy's coming back to Styles Law, but in a different office, the right office. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Janicky, I got a couple dollars. I was going to uh, retire from uh, my explosives license because, you know, I just thought I, I'm getting old. I shouldn't do this anymore. But uh, I got a phone call, and on Monday we went and blew up a bunch of stuff, and it was like, this is pretty cool. So I'm going to keep it for a while. <laughs> I got some happy bucks. <laughs> so on Sunday, my dad calls me and is like, I need some help. I'm like, okay. So I show up. He's like, we got to unload this trailer of broken down four wheelers. Now part of that's my kid's fault because J Joe, the four-year-old flipped a four wheeler and it, well, it needs some help. But he, my dad's also like, yeah, we got to get this fifth wheel hitch out of the back of my truck. I'm like, do you not have three sons that live in Cedar Woolley that can lift heavy things? My dad's like, I can't get up there. So I cleaned out the back of his truck so he could pass his explosive inspection on Sunday. So I think I should have got that happy buck. And then I've got some happy bucks because both of my girls, they're five and seven, scored their first soccer goals this week ever. My team is terrible. Like, legitimately terrible, but at least this week we didn't score any own goals. So, there's that. There you go. <laughs> I've just got a couple of happy bucks. So, usually Hunter is the fastest kid in his strength and conditioning class. And he comes home and he's just mad. He's like, God, that big boy kid is just a beast. I got 18 miles an hour and he got 20. I hate that kid. Last call, anybody else? All right. Okay, thank you, Jared. Okay, that brings us to our program. So, Mr. Johnson, as he's coming up, um, we have uh, Ron McHenry from the Boys and Girls Club uh, here at Skagit Valley, Skagit County, to present Social Emotional Learning Connections. And uh, Eric will talk a little bit more about that. Thank you, President Brockman. Uh, very excited and honored to be introducing today's program and speakers from the Boys and Girls Club of Skagit County. And it's an organization and a movement that's near and dear to my heart. I've had the pleasure of serving the last six years or so on the board with fellow Rotarian uh, Mike Nielsen. But uh, please don't hold that fact against us, um, thinking that we're less of an organization because of him. He does have some good insights every once in a while kind of like how a blind squirrel can find a nut every now and then. Hey, I love you. <laughs> so here to present are a few individuals that I highly admire and respect for what they do for the youth of our valley and for the Cedar Valley community. Um, our fearless leader, Ron McHenry, president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club since 2014. Uh, he's also joined by his team members, uh, Chief Development Officer Ian Faley, a Skagit uh, Philanthropy Achievement Special 
advancement specialist, and I'm proud to also let you know that he is the 2022 Boys and Girls Club of America National Resource Development Professional of the Year. And then also uh, Jerry Hyatt is with them. He is a recent transplant from Springfield, Missouri where he was a club kid. We take pride in having our club kids continue on with the movement and has spent more than 10 years working for clubs uh, there in professional roles before coming to his new home here in Skagit County in April as our club's chief operations officer. And so they will be presenting, like Phil said, on social emotional learning. So please give them a warm welcome. I hadn't planned on uh, using a podium because I didn't know you guys were still hybrid. I was just going to walk around like I would in a classroom. So this will be a little bit different. Um, Jeremy already moved. I normally also wouldn't correct a board member, but Eric, it's Mark, not Mike Nelson. And it's Jeremy, not Jer Jerry White Hyatt. There's a little, little booth there. So I want to make sure the names were correct. Sergeant at Arms should be taking notes for next week on finding. All right, so uh, thanks for having us today. I appreciate uh, everyone being here uh, as you would be normally on a Thursday. Um, so there seems to be a generally understood and accepted knowledge in the community that clubs are safe, fun, and positive places for kids and teens to be when school is out. Uh, each club, so we have 10 in Skagit County. Uh, we're in Concrete, uh, Cedar Woolley. We have two in Burlington, four in Mount Vernon, um, and we're in Anacortes. Um, each of those communities has a common mission and values, but the program priorities and services are defined by the community in which they operate. So the Cedar Woolley Club is very different than the Anacortes Club, for instance. Um, and that's very different than the Mount Vernon Clubs. Um, even the two in Burlington uh, are decently different from one another culturally um, and in programs. So here in Cedar Woolley, that meant partnering with the Cedar Woolley School District immediately as the pandemic closed schools and just two weeks later opening our first pop-up club at Mary Purcell. Uh, the organization is currently also in the process of opening a Discovery, a discovery Center preschool uh, here in Cedar Woolley in the future, similar to what we're doing in Anacortes that's under construction right now and opens uh, summer of 23. Uh, and then last year, because of community and family requests, we actually started a before school program in Cedar Woolley to be able to serve those families that were look, looking for services in that time frame. Uh, thanks to our fearless leader in this community, Christina Trader, who is one of your Rotarians. We could spend our presentation time uh, spitting out statistics and data points because I know you look forward to that every week. Um, but all of that can be found on our social media channels, on our website, our annual reports. We have third-party evaluators that come in and evaluate our programs and, and provide information to us. We make that all public. Um, instead, this is about helping you see how the sausage is made. Uh, what makes us different? Because it's not just about homework help and physical activity. Uh, clubs are about purposeful and intentional programs. So you're all about to get kind of uncomfortable and this is rotary so please live with that uncomfortableness um and is <clears throat> the one consistent element in all of our clubs is how we structure our activities and a current deep focus on social emotional learning concepts uh looking around other than phil um phil would you like to participate perfect do you want to move to another table because you can't do it alone with ian and then ian do you want to go find a space um so we've got everyone moved around and we're going to dig in on your table um you will see a sheet that looks like this that says why because why because so this is our first activity so if i'm at your table i'm going to do something like why is the sky blue and then i'm going to fold it back and hand it to my neighbor, who is then also going to write something, but their prompt will be because, and then you fold it back, and the next person does why, so on and so forth, until it's made it all around the table. And then once it's made around on the table, somebody, the next person, opens it up, 
and reads the story. So you have two minutes. We'll see who can win by following directions the closest. You have two minutes to accomplish this. Go ahead and go. Not gonna, is it going to pick up feedback? Oh, okay. Well, that's great. That's weird sitting up, standing up here. Oh, no. And you have about a minute left, and one or two tables may be picked to share their story. So also be thinking about who your spokesperson might be. It's fine. So it's exactly like communicating with the spouse. <laughs> yeah. That's a one way trip. Now, what's interesting, I think, is that kids can accomplish this task faster. Kids can usually accomplish it more quickly because they're not afraid of what others are thinking and they just spit out whatever's in their mind. Just, yeah, go ahead and read it to your table. Whoever's going to read it to the table. Yeah. Okay, is just about everyone read their stories? Nope, not yet. Okay, give it just another minute. And the crowd goes silent. I hope no one was being careful about penmanship. And apparently... Uh, the supers in the room are going to be checking spelling later. You guys done? Okay, read it. Yeah. Okay, which group, uh, which group would like to volunteer to have their silliest story read? Volunteers first. No? Okay, there we go. Go ahead. Okay. 
Okay, the first why. Why is Pluto not a planet? Because it makes a difference. Why is gas so expensive? Because Congress is unable to agree on anything. Oh. Not making it up. That's what it says. Why? That's the way I roll. Because the mountain view is beautiful. <laughs> All right, wonderful. We'll go ahead and move on so you can put that away or keep it and frame it. Uh, the next thing we're just going to walk through for time. We're not actually going to do it. Uh, plus, I want to be cognizant of people maybe feeling uncomfortable with moving around or participating. So um, on your table, there are two orange cards. Go ahead and grab one, read it, pass it around the table so everyone gets a chance to see both. Um, and then look around your table and pick someone that you would want to be partners with. So at your table, think in your mind, don't ask them, don't tell them, just think in your mind, this is all an imaginary exercise, who you would be partners with. Think about who you picked and why. Is it someone that you wanna to get to know better? Someone that you know, but would feel, feel more comfortable doing an activity with? Um, someone that you don't know or understand? Uh, what if that person didn't pick you back? How would you feel if that person didn't pick you back? Now that you've thought of those questions and you've looked at the text on the, the collaboration card, imagine yourself completing one of those two tasks with your buddy. Keep the image in your mind, which I know for some of you will be really hard for more than five minutes, but I beg you to stick with me. Keep the image in your mind for a few minutes and we're going to move on. So the final activity, at each table, there is a blue conversation starter card. Turn the card over and follow the prompt. Everyone should participate and provide at least one response. And if comfortable, continue the conversation forward. If there is a difference in agreements or perspectives or point of view, remember this is a conversation that's intended to learn from one another and not a debate for which time and research would be helpful. Got about three to five minutes to have your conversation, and each table may be asked to randomly provide a reflection on the card. If you do not feel comfortable providing a reflection on the card, I'll just ask that you put your hand on the table in front of you so I can tell that you would like to be left out of that process. So take a look at your card and start your conversation. Blue card. You guys, oh, no, no, blue card. Oh, because you, you were supposed to imagine that. That was an imaginary part, yeah. So you don't have to play tic tac toe, but I really appreciate you guys trying to. Oh, well, now he won. Uh, so, what's your conversation starter, Steve?
Has everyone had a chance to respond yet? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Well, keep it up. Charlie, has everyone had a chance to respond? Totally. Oh, now we're kind of on a new subject. subject. Yeah. New subject? No, are you on it? We're still on the. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you guys one minute to wrap up your final thoughts, please. One minute. All right, if I can pull your attention back into me real quick. Uh, remember, if you're not comfortable sharing, go ahead and put your hand on the table in front of you. Otherwise, I'm just gonna walk around and randomly grab people. Aldi, can you share a reflection about the conversation you just had? Well, yeah, I think I can say that we, we get along pretty well and uh, being in the same age group or having kids about we've gone through certain stages and it's fun to reminisce on that. So maybe the lesson learned is there's an opportunity to grow your circle through engaging people outside of your own age group. Yeah, you just agreed to a million dollar free line of credit to me, so I appreciate that. <sighs> Okay, how about this table? Anyone want to volunteer to share a reflection? I think we had a couple examples where um, we talked about our own kids and uh, sometimes when they're wrong, they think they're right and they double down on that. That was consensus. <laughs> That's great. And uh, Danny, how about your table? Anyone want to volunteer? Uh, reflection is just that we all find humor and laughter through different moments, whether it's with our families, whether it's social or even at work. Thank you. So quick polls. Who had a conversation about the card on the table the entire time? Raise your hand. That's okay. That's the whole point of it. All right. So going through some reflections today, when you think back to the first activity, the why because when you were writing that, why might that be a good way to start things off with a random group of kids or teens or adults? What are some reasons? Then you can just shout them out. There's no wrong answer. Good icebreaker. Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at it, it's being vulnerable with one another. Everyone can make a mistake. And so it levels the playing field at the, the table. It builds community. Um, it's an easy way to ensure that everyone participates. You probably noticed people at your table, some of which were a little bit more in the background and other activities. That's an activity that kind of keeps everyone engaged and going. With the, ex the exercise that we talked and walked through with the orange cards, where some people did it literally, 
um, and you were doing your buddy up, how many people pick someone new as their buddy? Someone they didn't know a whole lot about. Oh, you did. Nice. Okay. Um, can you say why you pick someone new? Uh, just interested in in the in the new ideas that that individual might have, and everybody else on the table, you know, kind of. <laughs> I think it's safe to say in Rotary we can get comfortable because we see each other once a week, and so we have a basic understanding. But there are opportunities to learn something new um, and deeper, and I would just encourage everyone to consider that. Um, with the conversations, what was the share of the dialogue like? Were there people that naturally dominated the conversation, people that kind of kept back? Anyone want to share on that? You don't have to, like, you know, point someone out about it. I'm just curious. I guess, did you register that there were people that naturally kind of shied to the background and that there were people that drove the conversation forward a little bit more? So with our kids it's important that at a younger age, they understand the different roles in any kind of group. Because when you're working in a 21st century workforce, you need to understand that sometimes there are people that are doers and they're just going to get it done, but they don't want to talk about it. And sometimes you have to have talkers that can provide the instructions and directions and that each role is just as important. And so it's important for kids to understand that they can still be their own genuine self and contribute to the overall uh, success of society. So thinking through today's activities, um, I'm gonna put you on the spot. This does not mean that you're actually doing it next week, but I'm just curious. Um, you know, I think most Rotary clubs, there's a group of people uh, or groups, multiple groups of people that kind of sit in the same area or tables each week. At least I know that's true with mine. Um, and so with my club, when we did this activity, because they were mine and I felt comfortable doing so when they walked in, I told them they had to sit next to someone new. I couldn't do that here or I'd be taken out and tarred and feathered. So what I wanted to point out though, is that, um, there's opportunities to make that kind of change. So if you were going to do that in your rotary club at some point, like in a purposeful way, what's, what are some ideas on how you might have people sit at tables? Oh, yeah, you can sit at a table by yourself or make sure there's equal numbers as you walk in. That's a great idea. Randomly assign letters. You could do it based on uh, similar shirt styles. You could do it based on eye color. There are all sorts of different ways to be able to sort people into unique um, fashion. And it's something to kind of think about. It's something that we try to do with our kids because it creates different communities, because when they're talking to one another, they're not talking about one another. And that's a really important consideration. So as we wrap things up, uh, if you can please place your pen, which purposefulness on that, there was one pen per table, just like we do one pool cue at the pool table. So not necessarily just because we don't want them to play swords with it, but because it forces them to share the dynamic resource instead of each feel like they need to have their own. Um, so if you can put all that back into the middle of the table, that would be great and I'll continue uh, kind of debriefing. So senses are more than just taste, sight, sound, smell, um, and touch. Boys and Girls Clubs work to incorporate different senses into activities and programs that build upon what we do. A sense of belonging. At Rotary, each week, there's a greeter or there's the people at the table that provide you a warm welcome. They make sure as you walk in that you understand you're a member of this community and it provides a sense of belonging. We do the same thing in our boys and girls clubs with our kids. You were asked to make sure the materials were placed as directed and found a sense of usefulness. You helped clean up. You were asked to contribute to ideas related to how your Rotary Club might shake up seating in the future, giving everyone a sense of influence. And thinking about the skills learned or practiced today, communication, understanding, and how that might help with conflict resolution, you gained a sense of competence. And those are the four senses that we look to inspire and enhance in kids, belonging, usefulness, influence, and competence. So again, like I said, I could throw a bunch of data at you. Uh, not going to do that because I'm going to make sure people are out on time. 
Um, but there is one data point that I did want to share because um, it's really troubling to us. Each year, club kids and teens in all of our clubs participate in something called the National Youth Outcomes Initiative. And it's conducted by a third party through Boys and Girls Clubs of America. We get the information back about three months later. It aligns with the Healthy Youth Survey and Youth Behavior Risk Survey that are done in different states uh, each year and even grades. So we do that to compare because if rates in any category are lower than the student population, that tells me we're not using our resources effectively because we should be eliciting better outcomes than a child that's not involved in one of our programs, regardless of the circumstance. This year was a really scary year for us. Um, as an organization, we've historically outperformed in every prevention category, abstinence, sexual activity before age 13, tobacco use, marijuana use, alcohol um, use. We've always outperformed state level, um, regional level, national level. And uh, this year, there was, a, there was a big outlier. So our organization can celebrate we're one point ahead of the state average on this. Um, but compared to the regional and national averages, it's really kind of scary. Um, over the course of COVID, the abstinence number for alcohol use amongst teens 13 to 18 dropped about 20 points. Um, I think it was 17 total. That's really, really scary. Um, every other indicator for us, we actually hit 100% abstention, self-reported, 100% abstention in marijuana use, sexual activity, everything else, alcohol is where it took a big nosedive. So um, we haven't been able to compare to the local school numbers yet uh, because they have a longer process because you know state bureaucracy and such, but uh, we'll be doing that. And I suspect that the school districts are gonna be seeing uh, similar data. And so as you think about this, this day, hopefully you walk away with a better understanding of what we do in our clubs every day and hopefully you hear me say in your own families and those other families that have kids 13 to 18, please share with them that observation of changing behaviors. Obviously, you know, checking your liquor closet every once in a while is a good thing. Um, it would be really good for people to start monitoring uh, because we want to make sure kids stay on the right track. So does anyone have any questions for me about Boys and Girls Clubs? I do want to give a special shout out to Charlie Bush. So my first role as an executive director was when I was sent as a loaned executive to Prosser to help them start their club. And then uh, they hired me to become their first executive director. Charlie was a founding board member. Um, in eight weeks, we managed to secure three years of pledges, um, equaling about $300,000 a year in a community that traditionally hadn't raised funds before other than the hospital. Um, and so I was super excited to see Charlie come to Cedar Woolley um, because I know how dynamic he can be and how much he cares about the communities he lives in. So I haven't been able to connect with him until today. I'm glad that I did. Anything? Yeah, Danny? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 we do. And um, I didn't bring it up because we're doing fine. Um, so, there, the one area, <laughs> the one area we have a problem is uh, 13 to 15 year olds in uh, physical altercations. There's this, there's a spike in the number where 25% of our kids reported having two or more fights this year, um, and uh, it, it was just, it was a, it was a big outlier for us. No, no, not a big change. Um, the only thing that is seen as bad for us is. Um, our kids report that they don't drink a lot of juice. Um, and when we looked at the data, we're like, well, that's weird. And then we thought, oh, that makes sense because we actually don't serve juice. We serve milk every day um, because I believe, uh, based on my own upbringing, that serving juice every day can develop a taste for someone for sweets. Um, and it's not as healthy as the fruits and vegetables actually consumed raw. And we serve those by the tonnage each year our kids outperform every category when it comes to um, nutrition, except for the juice thing. And I'm okay with juice being low. Any other questions? 
we really appreciate the support of the Cedar Woolley community. Um, you know, many of you in here have been longtime donors to the organization. You come to our events, you support the club. We have such a dynamic partnership with the city and the school district. Um, it's a very special place to be, and we're honored to be here. So thank you for your time today, and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you, Ron, Jeremy, and Ian. I do have a parting gift for you from the greatest Welcome, Chris, for joining our club. You will be a huge asset to us. We appreciate you coming on board with us. Uh, auction meeting next Thursday, library at 5.30. And I think that concludes, if there's no other club business, today's meetings of the greatest Rotary Club in the...